I might be out of breath, but for good reason. I might have to run because I'm a little bit late, as in show's about to start uh, over there right now, actually, while I do this intro. So gonna go play some cards again. Welcome back. Gonna play some Hustler. We're gonna play a very fun game today. It's $25 anti game, which means so everyone puts 25 bucks into the middle, no blinds. We run it, very different structure. So uh, should have some fun hands. This guy's in town. He made it. Yeah, Welcome back. He made the vlog already. <laughs> I don't have to bluff into him now. Yeah, no. He's, this guy just keeps following me every time I go. Every time. Give me the money. Give me the money. He takes all the money. Anyways, I'm going to try to knock him the money today. And uh, yeah, Bankle Challenge is uh, currently in the green. No chance that it should go down in the red today because I'm up about 200,000. So I shouldn't be able to lose 200,000 in this game, but worse and crazier things have happened here. Of course, out of breath. Let's get into playing some poker. The road to a million continues. This is the anti game. $25 from everyone basically sacrificed into the middle, and there are no blinds. So if you want to come in, you got to put $50 in to limp in at least. I buy in for $100,000, and one of the first hands we get dealt, 6-4 of clubs from early position. I decided to limp in here for $25 because, well, it's only $25 to calls. So I limp in, a bunch of other people limp, and it's a multi-way pot of no raising preflop. Flop comes queen 6-4, so that's pretty sweet to see bottom two pair here. I check it since we're out of position against other players, and the hijack leads for $200. When action folds to me here, feeling pretty comfortable to go for a raise and try to get as much money in the middle before seeing some bad turn in river cards. So I put in $800 as a raise, and the hijack comes along for a call for $600 more. And then when the turn comes, the worst one to see, Jack of Diamonds, not feeling great about it. Queen Jack for two pair beats me. Flushes beat me as well. I decided to check it since I'm out of position with not the strongest hand anymore. And when he fires out 1200 bucks, it's not a price that I am too scared of just yet. Happy to make the call, but going to be cautious. The river now comes the eight of spades. Now a straight is available for 10-9 if you ever wanted to get sticky with that. Anyways, action goes check, check. No more money in the middle. I show two pair. It's going to be good for a $4,000 pot. Hey guys, quick reminder that there's a merch drop live right now on rampagepokerstore.com. I'm rocking the new and improved luck box here with the roller coaster edition, which is indicative of the past couple months of my poker play. Up a couple thousand, down more than I should be, and up again and down again. It's been a swingy couple months, so I wanted to rep this to represent the last couple months. Behind me is the new and improved premium signature luck box. It's my favorite color with the light blue. Along, it comes with black as well. Last hoodie is the luck fuck. You know, sometimes you, you hit a set and then they just hit a gutter on you. That's kind of what that represents. And last but not least, we have the punter hat on my head right here. All of these are available for a very limited time on rampagepokerstore.com. There's also a giveaway, so four lucky people will get a chance to win $500 as a big thank you for supporting the merch and supporting the lifestyle and the channel. So a uh, big thank you to everyone who purchases and let's get to the video. Moving right along, about a couple minutes later, Ace 8 off suit in early position once again. There's the only one player who limps in for $25, gonna be attacking and being aggressive against that. I raise up to 300 bucks and I get the middle position player and only gun player to call. So we got a pretty suspect hand, multi-way to a flop we go of 10, nine, seven. Action checks to the middle position player who throws out a bet of $400. The only gun player makes the call and here certainly can go either way with a call or a raise. And considering we're multi-way, wanted to be a little bit more cautious and passive, I just call as well. So now going to a turn, which comes the ace of spades. Overall, giving me top pair, pretty good card to see as now maybe I just sucked out and have the best hand. Action's going to check a round. Now off to a river, which is the jack of hearts. Now I have a straight. Improving on the turn and even improving better on the river here. The Under the Gun player puts in a bet of $1,000. Sitting with a straight, I feel like I don't know how to get more value out of this hand. It's also not the best straight available as King Queen beats me, Queen 8 beats me. I decided to just make the call. I think raising is a little bit ambitious to hope somehow a worse hand than me can call. Anyways, I call, middle position player fold, and we end up chopping with Big John, who also has an 8 for a straight. So no blood here. I guess we make a little bit as we chop the middle position player's money. 
And then now the very next hand, we pick up King 10 of diamonds this time. I'm in the cutoff and there is a early position raise to $250. Two players call this 250 and I'm in position of this action now. And I think I just want to isolate and try to be more aggressive here against multiple opponents. So in position of everyone, I have King 10 of diamonds. I raise it up to 1200 bucks. I get the early position player original razor to call and everyone else ends up folding. So I did isolate the pot now going heads up to a flop of queen four, four, two diamonds. My opponent checks over to me here with a flush draw and a king. I'm going to throw out $1,500 and get a pretty quick fold. So pretty nice one to win here about another $4,000 pot in the middle. It's a small pot, but Hey, still feels good to win these pots, especially when I'm on quite a large downswing. Any sort of chips being pushed my way is always a good sign. And in this next hand, I don't really want to play a small pot here. When on the end player raises it up to 300, early position player calls, another player calls, then the hijack three bets to $2,000. Oh my goodness. I looked at it, kings in the cutoff. And here, I have a decision to make. Considering the ungun player is Nick Fertucci, someone who doesn't really raise too light, I suspect him to be quite strong. And because of that, I kind of want to set the trap with kings, as weird as it is. I, I wanted to experiment with something new and cold call the 2000. Here, trying to play out of the box a little bit more unorthodox with a strong hand as well. I call, and unfortunately, Nick does not squeeze. He just calls, and my plan does not go as well as I hoped it would. Anyways, everyone else ends up folding. So we're going to go three ways. I'm in position now. In a pot where I just cold called, you never really see me calling three bets ever, but this time I did, and we're off to a flop of eight, eight, four, two diamonds. Nick checks, hijack ends up checking as well, and here I certainly have to put some money in the middle, hoping someone has a lower over pair than me at this point. So I throw out $3,000, about a half pot sized bet, and we do get one customer. Nick ends up making the call in the hijack folds. Now we're off to a turn, which comes the king of spades. Oh my goodness. Turning top boat, turning basically the nuts. This is quite the spot with two flush draws on the board. Now my opponent checks over to me and I decide and think whether I want to bet or check this one. Obviously I'm way ahead now. I have the best hand, but Nick has lots of money behind. And considering how I played this hand, I just feel like I wouldn't get much credit as played. So for that reason, I decided to fire out $6,000 because I'm known to be a bluffer. I'm known to not have value ever here in this spot. So why not dump some money in when I do have the nuts? And here, Nick with pocket jacks goes into the tank for quite some time and ends up folding. Hmm. Folds pocket jacks. Very good fold here by my opponent. And I get to win this pot. Does feel a little salty as my opponent had ace king that I could have raised again pre-flop. Could have played a much bigger one, but hey, my call preflop might have costed me a couple extra thousand dollars here. So two hours into the stream, I'm up $10,000 so far. So not a bad start either way. Happy to move on with a profit now. Moving on to the next hand, there are four players who limp to me here and looking at a king jack offsuit in the cutoff. Gonna isolate against all these limpers. Don't want to give them a free price to see a flop. I make it 500 bucks. And here I get two early position players to limp in, make the call. So three ways to a flop, which comes seven, seven, six, doesn't connect with me much and hoping it didn't connect with my opponent as they check it to me. I throw out a small bets of 500 bucks here. The ungun player makes the call who limped in. So don't love that. Just sitting with King high on a board that doesn't really hit me too much. And when the turn comes, the five of clubs, definitely not a board that's going to hit me ever. So action is going to go check, check, assuming that my opponent has a good enough hand here. And when the river is the three of clubs, I'm totally done putting money into the middle for sure. And here, even worse, will decide to lead out for $2,000. Not much for me to do with just king high. I'm going to let this one go and let will take the pot. On to the next interesting situation with Jack seven suited. There are six players overall who limp to me and well, Look, we are not going to let these opponents see a free flop. I'm going to charge for $600 to see the flop with really not a great hand. But hey, let's just fire money in the middle pre-flop. Hope to get some folds, but we're going to have to navigate this one as we get the onion player to call, plus four opponent calls. Everyone else ends up folding. So hey, at least I eliminated the field a little bit from six players who limped to three ways to the flop. 
And the flop comes jack-8-3 with a flush draw. So that is pretty good news here for me. When action checks it over to me here with a jack-high flush draw, I'm going to fire out $1,000, hoping that this will get me enough credit and see some folds. But immediately, I run into an issue as the undergun player throws out a raise of 3100 other opponent folds, and here I am with a decision with a flush draw. I'm definitely not going to go anywhere, of course, but I will be cautious, maybe thinking that my opponent is not going to be doing this very light ever. So uh, just hoping for a spade at this point. So here I am, I make the call, and we're off to a turn, which comes the Queen of Clubs. And on this turn card, my opponent just goes all in. I don't think I have much of a decision here. I fold the jack high flush draw, and luckily it was a good fold as Dr. H takes down this pot with top pair and the flush draw. Lucky me to not see a turn spade because I certainly would have doubled up my opponent, and that would not have been good for me. In the following spot, hoping to rebound, Big John in early position raises to $300. And for the second time tonight, I look down at another premium, Pocket Kings. This is as good of a hand as any to put in a three bet to $1,200 here. And Big John is going to make the call. So we're going to go to a flop with over $2,500 into the middle. And it is none other than Ace-8-5. Man, how many times will you pick up Kings and see an Ace-high flop? It's really just a disaster. Anyways, Big John checks... And I'm going to throw out a small bet of $400 here. Just seems like a board that I must bet on. And he makes the call for $400. Now off to a turn, which is the three of clubs. My opponent checks it over to me here and certainly can be cautious about my opponent calling on the flop. But I just want to be greedy, man. Let's try to get two streets of value right now on the flop and turn. So I'm going to throw out $800, another small bet. But hey, it's good enough for my opponent to call. So just hoping he doesn't have an ace in this spot. When the river is the jack of spades, I think it's time to stop being greedy. No need to throw in a third barrel with kings. That would be super, super thin. Action's going to go check, check. And I am going to win this one against John's pocket nines. Don't fault him for calling the flop and turn. And I think he was probably going to let it go on the river anyways. So I guess it's a good check by me. So $5,000 pot gets scooped my way. And we're going to enter one of the last interesting spots of the night here when Undergun Player limps in for $25. There's an early position raise to $500. Two people make the call and they look down at deuces on the button. Here, we're at a very friendly table, so I decided to punk and trick everyone by pretending to 3-bet, but obviously, you see my hand. Why would I ever 3-bet this? I just make the call slow roll or reverse slow roll. Who knows? Anyways, everyone is safe as I just make the call and everyone is here for a flop for $500. We go to a flop five ways, which comes ace, king, deuce. Let's go. Here, bottom set. What a spot to be in. Will, the original Razor, throws in a bet of $500 on an ace, king, high board. Makes a lot of sense for him to do that. Big John makes the call here. And remember pre-flop when I decided to pretend raise? This time, I'm actually going to pretend call. Here, I actually put in a raise. Of course, I've bottom sets. Got to slow roll everyone, get everyone on their toes. But here, I raised up to $2,500. Of course, with bottom set, you want to put more money in the middle. And sadly, Will folds. I wish he had something, but hey... Big John comes along for a call, which is my saving grace because obviously I want action with bottom set. Now we're off to a turn, which comes the king of spades. Well, that is a full house, ladies and gentlemen. And the flush also got there. Big John leads out for $1,000 and he has maybe $2,000 behind in his stack. So it seems to make sense for me to just go all in at this point, considering the size of the pot. And he ends up snap calling with ace 10 of hearts. So here, we're all in. I've got a full house, and he's not drawing dead just yet, to be fair. Any king or ace will give him the winner. We decide to run it twice. First river, clean as the ten of clubs. His three pair does not beat my full house. Second river, six of spades. So both are clean runouts here. And a $14,000 pot gets pushed my way to end the night. Always nice to set mine, get there, and get paid. The trifecta happened, and I'm very happy to scoop this pot up. All right, uh, game is wrapping up. I ended up booking a very small win, but nonetheless, good time overall. I mean, after a bunch of shots, 
things got a little out of hand in terms of at least like the fun at the table. Um, but out of all the streams I've had, this is probably one of the most tamest, which may be a good or bad thing. Who knows, in terms of at least uh, volatility of money, it was okay. So uh, wrapping things up, I was in the game for $100,000, out of the game, cashed out for $107,900. So book a win of $7,900, I'll take it. Um, you know, didn't really have that many like huge, big decisions. I bought the set, which is good against top pair, won the maximum, which is cool. And I don't really have much more to say. Uh, tried to play reasonable, wasn't as splashy as it used to be, trying to be a little more conservative and uh, relaxed at the end of the day, more chilled out. So um, that's the session. Next stream is another big one. It's gonna be a Friday stream at Hustler. So we're probably gonna play 50, 100, 200 and hopefully find a way to win that one. But, you know, signing off for now, uh, moving in the right direction in terms of the road to a million, at least booking two sessions, two profitable wins in a row back to back, which is always good for the morale, especially since considering how much I've lost before. So that's the video, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, th things are moving in the right direction. Obviously all the numbers are here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Next episode coming at you soon. See you guys next time, later.